Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. I've decided to pause our study in Colossians just to spend a few minutes declaring unto those who listen to this video just who Jesus Christ is, what Jesus Christ has done, is now doing, and will do in the lives of His people during this present age of grace in which we're living. You need to realize that Scripture stands as judge and jury over the words that we say. The reason that we can be absolutely, unfearfully dogmatic about what we say is because we can, with confidence, simply relay the Word of God. We are told to examine ourselves whether we be in the faith, and this video will briefly address a number of points which I believe distinguish modern day error from actual biblical truth. But I first want to begin with a, a basic element of truth that I hope will su help support everything else that follows. And for that, we have to jump ahead a little bit here to the end of everything, to the tribunal of Jesus Christ before which we shall all stand and give an account as to how we lived, how our lives, our service, our walk, our uh, belief system was built on the one foundation which is Jesus Christ. Because it's at that judgment seat of Christ that we know that a believer's entire life's work, that's singular in the Greek, not works, his entire life's work can be burned up yet such a beloved child of God, despite that stark revelation by an all-merciful God, will be saved. They will be saved. His entire life's work goes up in smoke, yet he's saved. That is a dramatic statement of Scripture, and it, it is one of the most eye-opening statements in the entire Word of God. It's also one of the greatest testimonies to the love and the grace of God toward His people, which will be demonstrated in the lives of many of His people. The word work is in the singular, His entire life's work. And I want you to just stop for a moment and consider just how sobering a statement that that is. So as I go along, I've provided a visual aid that and I felt might, might help, might work to help contrast the truth of these elements with the well-entrenched error that's, that's been held for so long by the majority of modern Christianity today. Error which I am firmly convinced will be that very thing that's burned up at the judgment seat of Christ. Why? Because it was not built upon the foundation of Christ. So naturally, we need to begin with the single most vital, the most crucial element of all. That being how you became to be a child of God in the first place. A child of the almighty, sovereign, majestic God. So we begin on the basis of the fact that you didn't raise yourself to life. Well, actually, let me go back a little ways. It began on the base. It begins. All of this begins on the basis of of the fact that God created everything. He He said, "Let there be light." He called into being that which was not. Okay. The same is true in your physical birth. You didn't choose your parents. You didn't decide when you were going to be born. The same is true with your new birth in Christ. In the same exact identical way, you had nothing to do with that new birth. John 1.13 clearly states that it was by the will of God, not the will of the flesh, that you were born from above. And in John 1.18, we read, Of His own will He brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of His creatures. That's where we begin. We have to begin on that basis, folks. If we can't agree on that, we don't have a whole, whole lot of ground to walk on as far as fellowship is concerned. Or maybe I should rephrase that and say that we, just, we don't have a whole lot to discuss as, as far as our origin, our new birth is concerned. Folks, that's where it began. Lazarus didn't decide to be raised from the dead. The people out here in the cemetery here 
they're not going to make a decision to be raised from the dead. In the same sense, we were born again by the will of God. We were brought into being, created by God, by the will of God, by what God did. And it is important, it is vital, it is extremely crucial that we come to understand that as we begin to build on the foundation, the one foundation, which is Jesus Christ, which will have an effect on the judgment seat of Christ. So we begin on that basis knowing that God is sovereign. Now I want you to take a look at the, the slide that I've showed here on the screen where that I have contrasted the spiritual with the fleshly or carnal what I believe is true Christianity as opposed to man-centered religion because this is important as we come to understand our standing before God someday where that all the, everything that was done in the flesh is burned up yet we ourselves will be saved yet so as through fire God is sovereign under the spiritual category, God is absolutely sovereign. It has been uh, considered for a long time that man's will, or God will not overrule man's will. That is absolutely false. He absolutely overruled your will because when it came to your new birth, because you were in bondage to that will, you could do nothing good. There's none righteous, no, not one. There's none that have, have understood all have gone all we like sheep have gone astray it took God overruling man's will if if left to our own will folks you wouldn't be where you are today you wouldn't believe you would not be a believer in Jesus Christ if God had left it to your will to be born again furthermore if he had done that then it would have been by works it's just that simple Okay, it had to be by grace. You had to be resurrected from the dead, brought out of death into life, quickened by God, just as you're, uh, anyone is raised from the dead, just as we will be raised from the dead, whether at the rapture or from the grave. It had to be that way. Man is not sovereign, God is. It is the will of God, not man's will. But yet modern Christianity believes that man's will overrules God's will. And that is absolutely, uh, well, the argument there on that is absolutely ridiculous. Christ is the fo our focus, folks. You, we begin our lives building on that foundation which is Christ, not self. Well, the focus is not on self at all. Scripture is primarily a revelation of the person and the work of Jesus Christ. It is not a book of instructions on how to live the Christian life. It is a revelation of the person and the work of Jesus Christ in which God presents us as Christ who is our life. He manifests himself in and through our lives and that by faith. It's the righteousness of God that's based on faith. So grace saves or delivers the law does not do that yet sadly among most of, of Christians uh, institutions today Christian denominations modern uh, uh, the religious system based on human merit would have us believe that law saves that law delivers believers folks were saved by grace not law and it amazes me even to this day after 30 two years of being a Christian that even so-called educated pastors, scholars, Bible teachers cannot connect the dots and see that we are not saved by law. That law the law doesn't make anyone righteous. That we're never, you know, made righteous through the law and that we don't produce righteousness through the law. It is of the spirit, which is in contrast with flesh, human works, which is merit-based. It is through the spirit, not the flesh. Spirit is contrasted with flesh. On, on that day in which we are judged, everything that goes up in smoke, 
was done in the flesh. It was human works. It was merit-based. It was not of the Spirit. Word study. Okay? I don't know how many times I pointed out the importance of word. The Word of God as, as opposed to the traditions of men. The uh, hearsay. Well, this is what my parents believe. This is what my pastor believes. This is what Steve believes. I've, I've always told you, don't believe anything that I believe. It is not about hearsay, traditions of men, what we think might be true. What's important is what the Word of God says. And the emphasis that, that God places on our lives in Him is one of faith and trust in God, not in feelings or emotions or experiences or that we trust in self. That is of the flesh. That is carnal. That is what will go up in smoke at the judgment seat of Christ. It's about the sinless new man, that, that, that the new man is sinless. That we start out on the basis of our new creation being sinless. I pointed out before that the only reason Christ could be joined together with us in our spirit is, is through that new creation, that sinless new creation. He could not be joined together, united together with us in the flesh because he can't. God himself can't be tainted by sin. It has nothing to do with the unchangeable old sin nature that can do nothing but sin. Yet modern Christianity believes that we are single-natured individuals, that we're not dual-natured individuals. Here the Word says that we have been made a new creation in Christ, that God didn't eradicate the old man but left him, so that we are dual-natured individuals in which there is a conflict that rages within us. And yet, modern Christianity ignores that conflict, the truth of that, and doesn't connect the dots, and doesn't come to the conclusion that we are dual-natured individuals. Folks, we're not single-natured individuals. We are saints. We are righteous. Made the righteousness of God in Christ. When the Father looks down at you, He sees you as righteous as His Son. Yet, modern Christianity, sadly, promotes the idea, the false, erroneous idea, that we, the sinner, is striving somehow to become righteous because God wants us to be righteous, so we have to work really hard at it. That also will go up in smoke at the judgment seat of Christ. We have a guaranteed hope, not wishful thinking, not I hope I make it someday. That will also go up at the judgment seat of Christ. We have joy, not despondency. All of the times that we've spent despondent and despairing and, and worrying and concerning about ourselves and our walk and how we might please God through the flesh, all of that will go up in smoke. All of the feelings of guilt that you had, all of the feelings of condemnation will go up in smoke at the judgment seat of Christ. Same as it regards peace, where there's no condemnation to those in Christ. There's no judgment. All of the worry, the condemnation, the guilt will all go up in smoke at the judgment seat of Christ. We've been fully forgiven, not partially, but fully forgiven as the, our study in Colossians will go on to show. We haven't been forgiven for part of our sins to be left with the rest to just kind of work that out as we go along. We begin on the basis of having been fully forgiven in Christ. When it comes to fruit bearing, that's Christ. He's the vine, we're the branches. Everything that's done in the flesh, that's fruits, plural, is, is how most of modern Christianity looks at that. It's actually fruit singular in the Greek, just as I've shown you the word work here in regard to Bema is in the singular. The same is true of fruit. Why is that? Because it's Christ Himself. You can't piecemeal this, break it down into parts. If one uh, characteristic of the fruit of the Spirit is there. They're all there. If one is missing, none are there. We've been fully blessed. Okay, not conditionally blessed, but fully blessed. Blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies. And it's pre-trib. The nature of the church is not understood if you don't understand that. So as we travel on down that road toward uh, the inevitable, 
which ought to be, we ought to look forward to with great expectation, not dread. The judgment seat of Christ, the tribunal of Jesus Christ, where we are rewarded for that which was done through Christ, which for that which we built on Christ, not ourselves, folks, not ourselves. I want you to imagine how many Christians today that who truly love God, who are our brothers and sisters in Christ, which we ought to have a burden for, are traveling onward, determined to arrive at that destination and stand before God, never having realized that the flesh profits nothing. Nothing. And on the other side of that equation, you're going to have believers who stand there having fully realized that it, God did in them through Christ what they could never do for themselves and they spent their entire lives giving God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise for that, which we will all do throughout the endless ages of eternity. Look, I love you all. I truly do. This is Steve. Thanks for watching.